Hello, everybody. Good morning, and uh, welcome to uh, welcome to the start of another great day here on Adobe Live. I'm Evan Abrams. Thank you for coming and joining me here. It's so good, so good to see everybody here. Lots of people hanging out in the Behance.net chat. Great to see everybody. Uh, this morning, uh, I'm going to be giving you a little bit of a bit of introduction to some uh, some things we can do in Adobe After Effects today. We are getting started with a little Adobe After Effects. Oh, I need to mute some stuff, and now we're good. <laughs> so today, uh, today is is going to be kicking it off a little uh, a little beginner, a little intro time into Adobe After Effects. We're going to be taking some lovely logo templates, which. If you all want to follow along with what we're doing and animate the same logos that I am, then uh, you can go ahead and grab the starter file. Uh, there's a link in the Behance uh, description there uh, if you want to grab that. So hopefully, hopefully that's going to be good. Um, if uh, if many of you in the chat do not currently use Adobe After Effects, well, this is for you. Uh, hopefully we can make you more comfortable uh, with some of the tools, more comfortable with some of the workflows, and... Uh, It'll all seem natural and good. Uh, like I said, I'm Evan Abrams. Um, I've been using After Effects for a long time now. Uh, 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 using it professionally for over a decade. Uh, and, uh, you know, messed around uh, with it a lot before that as well. Um, and today, we're going to start, uh, like I said, animating some logos. Um, but this is just the start of a big day. It's the start of your time in After Effects. It's the start of a big day here on Adobe Live. So... You know, uh, before we jump in, I did want to point out we have a, a nice schedule of activities coming to us. So after you're done getting started with me, you've got a Photoshop creative challenge uh, with Kathleen Martin coming up after that. And then we've got uh, some drawing and painting. I think it's is it hand lettering today, maybe? Um, I'm not sure. We've got uh, Anna, Anna Davis Court uh, coming up at uh, 930. And then we've got uh, a wonderful illustrator, uh, David. Uh, what do we got here? This is... Uh, uh, yeah, Claddy from uh, Print My Soul is up up uh, at 11.30. And then, of course, we got prototyping in XD. We've got uh, Creative Challenge with Howard Pinsky coming up. And then we've got an interesting and fun new show uh, at 2.30 to round out the day. So you're going to want to stick around for Design in the Dark, um, which is going to be a really interesting uh, thing to check out. So it's going to be um, a designer who doesn't know the brief, teamed with a director who can't see what the artist is doing, uh, that's going to be a hoot. So definitely stick around in your day uh, if you can, or, you know, go away, do some stuff, come back. But for now, let's get into uh, some stuff with Adobe After Effects. Like I said, uh, we're going to be animating logos. If you want to get the starter file, it's in the Behance.net description. If you're watching this on YouTube currently, hello, YouTube people, uh, I'll, be, I'll be watching the chat over on the Behance, so come on over to behance.net slash live uh, to check that stuff out. Um, and uh, I'd love to see if you have any questions, concerns, suggestions. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna be doing that stuff, um, doing that stuff from the chat. So I'd love to know who you are, where you're from, what you do, and uh, what you'd like to do in After Effects. So do let me know. Do let me know in the chat. I see a lot of people that I recognize. Coming back, oh, we got PD from Spain hanging out. Um, apparently, uh, newer uh, in the chat, there's been a terrible oil spill uh, out there. So, you know, people stay safe uh, indoors with with uh, with After Effects. So, you know, do let me know, you know, where you're from, what you're doing, and uh, that'll be great. So many great people here. So many people from, from all over the world. That's what I love about creativity. It kind of brings us all together. So, anyway, let's uh, let's get into it. Ooh. I've got a hot beverage to start my day, so uh, let's have a look at the old screen here. What we're doing is we are going to be animating some logos and then uh, putting them on a little background and kind of making it all look nice. So here's some some logos that I animated previously, uh, just to just to get warmed up on this stuff. But you know we might do something totally different. The point here is to. Um, is to give you kind of a, a base level kind of skill set to take things that are going to be made in Illustrator. We're going to move them into After Effects to create this stuff. So just as a little preview about what's going on, we're going to be trying to build this kind of a thing where we have, you know, maybe a bunch of layers, maybe a whole lot of keyframes. I don't want you to get scared by these keyframes, but we're going to be manipulating paths, manipulating shapes, 
we're going to be manipulating um, little text layers. We might do a little text animation. So there's all sorts of interesting things that we might get into here, creating uh, these kinds of positive and negative spaces, moving objects around, building things. So hopefully that's good. Uh, which is great. So, oh, it's good to see so many people here. We got people from uh, Dubai, South Africa. Ooh, uh, we got uh, some people from Nigeria, but currently living in Brooklyn. That's awesome. Um, and uh, I got my neighbor here is from uh, from uh, Nigeria. So, um, it's an excellent architect. Um, and we got people from India, people from Spain, um, <laughs> Southern California, of course. Uh, but uh, yeah, so our our journey. Just like you can begin in one country and end up living in another, uh, you know, we are going to begin our journey not in After Effects, but our journey will begin in Illustrator. So if you uh, if you download the Logo Shapes uh, template, that uh, wonderful template in the link so you can follow along, we have uh, these shapes that we get to play with. So we got like 16 kind of plate shapes. And then we have, say, 16 kind of textual arrangements. And then uh, here's kind of 16 combinations of them together. You know, some of them with little little embellishments on here, um, those kinds of things. So of these, I think let's start by picking one and kind of rolling with it and see where we go. Uh, we're going to look at breaking apart things in here and we're going to, uh, you know, take it all take it all in fun directions. So I like something that is a little bit geometric, a little bit complex. Um, so I want to start with number two here. Let's start with something simple like number two. Now, I'm going to just ungroup everything. I'm going uh, Command Shift G to ungroup things so that I can I can select and isolate the various uh, elements here. Now, if you're working on client work, if someone has sent you logos, this is actually a very common way to receive them in a file that is maybe suboptimal for animation, right? So we may have to actually recreate some of this geometry inside of After Effects, but don't worry, don't worry, we'll get there, it's gonna be great. So I'm going to uh, select this one here. I like it because while it looks complex, it's actually made of some very simple things. Uh, but hopefully it's going to be it's going to be fine. So I'm going to just Command C select this, and I'm going to go File New, and I'm going to create something new. Uh, I'm using the Web Large uh, template, but it is I want a 1920 by 1080 frame. The color mode is RGB. Now this is kind of important because usually when you're receiving logos, you might be getting them in uh, the CMYK color space, which is for print. But since we're going to be animating them for use on social media, we are going to be moving them over to an RGB environment. I hope that makes sense that, that one of these uh, color spaces, these color uh, formulas are for print and one of them is for video. So that's kind of the first thing you wanna do. Make sure your designs make sense in video. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and create that. So this is 1920 by 1080. This is kind of a default broadcast size. Usually on social media, we might see things vertically, we might see things uh, square, but working in this kind of way uh, can help us out. So I'm just gonna paste from one place into the other. We end up with that. Um, but yeah, um, and um, uh, someone in the chat is saying uh, they used to receive .AF AI files with everything grouped without names and even a, a PNG in there. Oh my goodness. Oh, these are, oh boy. Yeah, <laughs> at least Tim Mobest, at least it's not a JPEG stuck in a Word doc. Right. At least. But we do have some challenges here. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to start by scaling it up to maybe larger than we require, right? We might animate this and then shrink it down, but working large is gonna give us space to play, okay? And in here, one of the challenges we have, if I twirl down into this layer here, you'll notice that we have these layers. We've got since uh, 1920, um, 33C, um, I'm gonna change these. I'm gonna update this to be my, my birth year, 1987. 
So you do the math and you'll learn how old I am. Um, and 33C, I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna put ECA. That's, those are my initials. I'm, I'm E.C. Abrams on the internet, um, so I'm going to go with that little personal branding for me. <laughs> Don't worry, the next one, after we do this one, I'm going to be taking suggestions from the audience, so we're going uh, to be enjoying that. So, let's say this is the logo we've been given, okay? Graciously, these are text layers, right? And hopefully we've synced up our fonts so that we have access to all the fonts, that's great. These could come in as shapes, that's fine. I love it when they're text, so let's leave it like that. <laughs> That's right, Tim, I'm not 29. That's crazy. <laughs> oh yeah, PD in the chat. I have seen things you wouldn't believe. <laughs> Attack ships on fire off the shoulders of Orion. Absolutely. Um, so one challenge we have though I want to separate these out onto unique layers, okay? So I'm gonna take this button here, create new layer, and with a layer selected, I'm gonna just drag this little box and move it there. I'm gonna do it again, just so we can all follow along. So I'm gonna make a new layer, I'm gonna select an element, drag that box up like here, so now we can see that. I like to turn off the layers as I separate them, just because we don't need to worry about them anymore. We've already separated it. Boom. And now we get into our last little piece of the puzzle. Um, that this shape, depending on how we want to animate it, may not be appropriate. Right? What I would actually like to do is to separate all of these different boxes. Right? Which could be very difficult for us. Because as you can see right now, they, they don't really they don't really separate but I, you know what it's maybe it's an optical illusion but oh no 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 these are actually not strokes but these are filled paths this is really common when you get a logo you're going to end up with this kind of filled path problem okay so what i'm going to do though is we are going to try to recreate this geometry inside of after effects so right now all we really want to do um, is to is to deal with some of this stuff. Um, and uh, uh, newer, newer is asking if I can put myself on the bottom of the screen. Ooh, uh, I could maybe do that. Don't worry, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna give it a whirl. Ooh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try to move myself down to the other, to the corner of the screen. Let's see if that updates. Whee! Um, sorry, I didn't. Usually, usually I'm in uh, After Effects, so there's a little corner for me to live in After Effects. Uh, maybe this will help. Um, but yes, so this needs to be recreated when we go into After Effects so that we can animate it. Uh, in there, right? So that's our one of our challenges that we can identify early. Part of animating logos, part of animating any assets that come to you is identifying challenges and then overcoming those challenges based on our plan that we want to make, right? So our plan about how we're gonna animate this needs to start here in Illustrator, it needs to start by analyzing the forms, figuring out what we wanna do with them. Right now, I have analyzed this shape to determine that there's this lovely square shape in here that I will just, I'll just simply draw. Uh, I'll just draw around it so that we can appreciate uh, what it is. So you can kind of see uh, the one square here. Do, do, do. I'll make a red square. Ah. Oh. Um, and you can kind of see that this is the square shape, right? And then this shape is simply uh, repeated around uh, a number of degrees, right? It's a few degrees like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take such a square, move it into After Effects, and uh, we should be fine. Or we can just redraw the square in After Effects. So I hope that hope that works. Oh, um, um, Stephen or, or Stephen Booth, uh, um, uh, one of the two, uh, is asking in the chat, uh, what's the difference uh, between a stroke and a filled path? You know what? I'm, I'm really glad that you mentioned that. So um, let me just, uh, if anyone is familiar with my other streams, you know that it's time for us to go to Tangent Town. Um, so I'm going to start by drawing a square, right? And this square we know is a filled uh, path, right? I can, so it, it has on it uh, a fill that is black and no stroke, okay? 
I'm going to put a stroke on it. I'm going to put a, a pink stroke on it. And it's a stroke like that, right? So this has a fill and a stroke. Now it only has a stroke. So this is vector information is defined as having. Um, so the vector itself is this blue line, right? That is defined by these handles and points. Now it has a stroke applied around it so that the computer knows, ah, I should be placing something 20 pixels wide centered on that. You know, we, we're like giving it, we're giving it instructions, right? We're giving, we're giving um, the computer instructions about how to draw this, right? Um, there was, when I was growing up, there was a little program where you had to give commands to a tiny turtle and the turtle would basically draw a line wherever you sent it. And it was teaching us how to do vector graphics because we would have to instruct all the tangents and turns. And that's all this is. So we can express this pink line in a different way, right? I'm just gonna hold down, uh, hold down alt as I drag to make a new one. I'm gonna object uh, path. Uh, actually, what do I, I want to expand? I'm going to expand this thing. I hit expand. Notice that it doesn't have the line in the middle anymore, right? So this has the line in the middle. This does not have the line in the middle, okay? And that is because now it is defined by this path, this path, and filling in between them. Now, we're going to get into why this is important once we jump into After Effects uh, in a moment. Uh, but just remember that these are two ways of expressing the same thing. All right, so let's uh, clear that out. Let's get into it. This is the logo we have. I'm going to label my layers because that is wise. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's see. This one here is the year. Uh, this one here is the brand. This one here is the word since. And this here is the shape. Looks kind of like streusel. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, let's see, let's see. Da, 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 da. Let's see what we can do. I want to first save this, very important to save things. And let's see, let's call this um, example one. So that's a very imaginative name today. Um, you know what, we'll call it uh, August 10th A, because we might do a few today. Uh, oh, and Mallory is saying it looks kind of a, like a spirograph. It does. It does look kind of like a spirograph. Um, loved spirographs. Love, love, love them. I wish there was a spirograph app. I guess there is. It's called Illustrator. Um, <laughs> okay, so I'm going to save this. Okay. And as we do... As we do, all these look correct to me. I hit OK. Should be good to go. So now it's time to tab on over to uh, After Effects here. I'm going to reset this to my saved layout so that my visage can enjoy its rightful place up here in the top of the interface. Wee! Back up to the to the top of the interface where I belong, um, and. Uh, Let's start importing and getting into it. So I'll just close out all of these previous things, pretend that didn't happen, um, and let's uh, get into it. Oh, someone's asking, how will you consider typography? Is there a thesis behind it while choosing? Ooh, a lot of design choices are um, subjective. So when we're getting into which font and why, a lot of that should be informed by kind of the brand attributes per client basis, et cetera, um, for the different, the way something reads, not the way you can read it, but the way it reads or feels to the audience. So um, that's the idea when you're choosing fonts, you know, it's not really arbitrary. It's based on the function it has. Anyway, oh, I'm sorry, I've, oh, I almost pulled us back into tangent town. Uh, okay, here we go. Let's go ahead and import a file, august10th.ai, that was the one. We're gonna bring it in. We're gonna ask it to create a composition. We're not bringing it in as, as footage, we're bringing it in as, as a composition and retaining the layer sizes, okay? I'm gonna hit open. Now this has created a new comp called august10th A. 
with all of these lovely elements here. And they're all Illustrator layers. Okay, so these are all, they kind of behave at this juncture, they behave like JPEGs, JPEGs, or uh, bitmaps, right? As I scale them up, they get wacky and bad, right? Um, and uh, if you're scaling things and they look bad, just click this little button here, boop, and it gets crispy. Uh, for, so for vector layers, this is the continuous rasterization button, meaning we can now scale this with impunity um, and it will uh, behave uh, as we like. So let me just put that back down. However, I'm interested in doing something else. I'm going to select these, I'm going to right click on them, um, and we are going to go create, create shapes from vector layer. Ah, and now we're going to get this warning. Not all layers were converted because of empty or unsupported content. Okay, unsupported content. Now, what does that mean? What does that mean, unsupported content? Why would our year, brand, and since not be converted? Why did those not get converted? Well, let's go back into Illustrator and I'll try to explain why, okay? Um, so, what has happened is that because of the way these layers are treated in here, they didn't have an exact allegory inside of Illustrator, or sorry, inside of After Effects, right? So converting them didn't work out. These aren't paths. What's happening with these? So what we can do to make this a little bit easier on ourselves is that we can select these and we can create outlines from them. So we've converted our text into outlines, all right? So uh, that's, that's gonna save us that little bit of hassle. I'm gonna hit save here. We're gonna return, return to here. We are going to have a look at these layers. We're going to go create, create shapes. Ah, look at that. Problem solved. You know, all of our, all of our woes are behind us, you know. And uh, one trouble, though, they don't seem to look like they're in the right spots. That's not where I wanted them to be. So sometimes when you modify, if you modify your Illustrator file, after you've imported it, things can shift around in unpleasant ways. So it can be recommended that you figure everything out in Illustrator first, then bring it in. Don't be hasty. Okay. So let me just let me just start that over. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. Boop boop. Start that over. Do the process again. Import August 10th. Bring it in. Composition retain layer sizes. Okie doke. Good. Open it up. Everything looks like it's in the right place. Excellent grab them, and we can convert them if we wish, depending on what we want to do with them. Right, so that's how we could take these if we, say, wanted to modify their paths and stuff. Right? I don't think we really need to do that on this one. We could just leave these as these layers. I think we'll be safe with that. But I did want to show you that you can go in here and you can create, you can create shapes from vector layers and it will literally trace all the little paths. You'll have the little path points and you can animate these around as you like. We'll do that on a later example. We will. We will do that. For now, I want to do uh, something. I want to start us off um, very basically. I want us to take baby steps here. Okay? So, starting with this situation. Like I said, this isn't made of strokes. If it was made of strokes, we could use a simple kind of a write-on effect. Okay? So for example, I'm going to make a rectangle. Ooh, big red rectangle. Hello. Um, it doesn't need a fill on it. And I'm going to attempt to recreate the art, the uh, artwork here in After Effects so I can have a little bit more control over it. Right? So I'm going to start by taking the stroke color and I'm going to give us a nice, vibrant, garish color to it. Give it a stroke. You can kind of see the rectangles out at the edges of the... Uh, of the frame. I'm going to just shrink this in to be zero big and then grow it back out again. So, uh, well, I'm glad that people are, are enjoying, uh, are enjoying the, the explanations. This is great. Okay. Um, and I think someone was asking, can you save the final result as an animated GIF or GIF, whatever? Uh, that's a uh, Jay. Jay's asking that in the chat. You can absolutely. So you can ex export 
as as a, a GIF uh, from from uh, After Effects, if you like using Media Encoder, absolutely. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grow, 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 grow this out. All right, like so. Ooh, and look at that. Our artwork. I did not bother to uh, center my artwork. So now we've ended up with this kind of thing. There, just give it a few taps over, and there we go. So I'm trying to basically find the midline uh, on on this piece of artwork here, right? That's the idea, that I want to line this up boop, 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 right on the middle. And then I'm going to thicken this up, thicken it up gradually, gradually, so they line up almost perfectly, as perfectly as I can, right? Um, oh yeah, and there's some shout outs for, um, uh, for the GIF gun uh, plugin, lovely plugin, I enjoy it. Um, but yeah, so. <laughs> so, what I would like to do here. Hmm. Let's see, let's see. I'm going to now round this rectangle, right? So I'm going to take this rectangle, and you can see in After Effects, so in After Effects, we are drawing a shape. We have drawn this rectangle. But like I said at the beginning, Vector graphics are made of instructions, right? And in After Effects, we can modify all of the instructions kind of live as properties. So when you twirl into the contents of a shape layer, you twirl into the rectangle, twirl into this thing called rectangle path. These are the instructions that we're giving the computer about how to draw the rectangle path. So I'm going to now alter the roundness of the corners until they fit. Ah! perfectly. Um, and now we have done it. We have perfectly replicated one of these elements. Okay. Now, why would I want it to be a stroke instead of a fill? Why am I so, why am I so, you know, about this? Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add to this and I'm going to get, go add <laughs> trim paths, add a trim paths into this. So I'm adding something new into this shape layer, which I will now rename by hitting return when I've selected the layer, and we're gonna call this uh, square one. This trim paths is now giving more instructions to After Effects to say how much of this path should be visible, right? And it starts drawing it on. I hope you can, I hope I've chosen a, a suitably noxious color that you can, uh, you can really see this pop off of the frame. Oh, it needs to be a little bit rounder. There we go, round it just a little bit more. Um, so you can see that I can I can make this draw more of the path or less of the path. Right? Isn't that wonderful that I can do that? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a keyframe here with the end uh, right here. Um, hmm. And this end here that starts at 0%, I'm going to move ahead to two seconds, and I'm going to crank this up to 100%. So clicking the stopwatch is what sets the keyframes, right? This sets the keyframes. So I've set one here that at zero seconds, at this time, this value should be zero. And then at this time, this value should be 100, meaning that After Effects will figure out the middle in order to draw this line which I think it's done a very good job of. I'm going to add some more instructions. I'm going to add a little bit for this offset here, all right? So that at the beginning, it's going to be offset zero. And now here, maybe towards the end, maybe we can start to offset it just a little bit more. I don't know, let's say 90 degrees. It's thinking about it in terms of degrees, right? And I'm just going to slide that keyframe to the end here, holding down shift so it snaps in alignment. So. As this animates on, wee, it's going around, it's chasing itself around, and ends up like that. Wonderful. Now these are linear keyframes, so hopefully that's um, hopefully that's a good a good thing. Oh, I just want to check the chat real quick. Uh, looks like um, uh, people have had uh, having some qu troubles with their interfaces. Your interface may not look necessarily like mine, but the only real big time important spaces that you need to worry about are having your composition open, 
having your timeline open, you know, those are kind of the two windows that we want to we want to play with, right? And um, Mallory is asking, uh, what is my default settings for the workspace? Ooh, good question. Um, right now we're on we're on the workspace I call tutorial time, uh, which is where I have my info panel over here. I got my effects and presets. I've got my character and paragraph panel over here. The most common things that I touch uh, when we're dealing with uh, with that stuff. Uh, but hopefully that uh, that makes sense. Um, <laughs> And then, oh, someone is asking in the chat, if animation can be done in Adobe After Effects, why does Adobe Animate exist? Uh, if Adobe Animate has really differentiated itself. So Adobe Animate uh, is what used to be called Flash. And if you want to do those kinds of more traditional uh, traditional animation workflows, that might be the place to go. I know you can do a lot of great frame by frame, pose to pose stuff in there. So hopefully that hopefully all that makes sense. Oh, I'm getting distracted. Oh, we're, we've, we've only got another hour to hang out with each other. So we need to we need to work fast. Um, uh, so uh, someone is asking, what if the logo is complicated and we want to recreate it for better control over animations? Oh, it's it's precisely what we're doing here. You've you've uh, you've you've caught me with what we're doing. This thing, right? This shape, this original shape, this OG shape um, is made of a complex series of of of, uh, of filled paths, I wanted to turn them into strokes, so I redrew this line, and now I'm animating this line uniquely. Right? So hopefully that hopefully that makes sense. Um, but one more thing, one more thing with our animating. These down here are linear keyframes, which we know because they are little diamonds. I'm going to click this button here to solo this, so that you can see only this, and I want you to to just you know, you can be honest with what you think about how that's moving. I don't, I don't like it. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to grab these two. I'm going to select these two keyframes and I'm going to hit F9. F9 will ease both of those. Now I'm going to go into a secret place. Only you and I, now everyone knows about this. <laughs> this is the graph editor. We're going to go in here and the graph editor uh, shows us how these values are changing over time. And this is... This is how you make your animation look nice. You grab these influence handles, give them a little bit of a pull. And now it's getting real nice and slow as it comes into the end. This graph is showing us how quickly things are moving over time. Right? Now, if you just ease them, if you just hit F9 and ease them, it just looks like this, right? That hopefully that makes sense. And you can kind of see the difference how that looks, but if we grab this handle, these handles here, and give them a pull, holding down shift, we can end up with a different feel to the motion. So playing in this graph, getting comfortable with this graph can really help you out, um, and uh, hopefully that makes sense. I don't want to belabor that too much. Let's only do it once, so that <laughs> it can be intimidating, that graph editor, I know, um, but it's definitely something you want to get familiar with. Um, it's the scariest part of After Effects, and once, once you get it, you're good. So I've done one of these, right? I did I did this once. I'm going to duplicate that layer, which cleverly is named it square two. Uh, we don't really need to solo these anymore. Now I'm gonna take square two. I'm gonna call up its rotation, or you can press W to grab the rotate tool. Um, and we're just gonna try to rotate this boop, to be there. So we know, we know it's 30 degrees, so I can just type in 30 if you'd like to get it exact. Let me just type in a 30, and there we go. Duplicate it again, call up the rotation. We can type in 60 degrees, or we can hit the plus button and add another 30 degrees. 30 plus 30 equals 60. Great. I'm not great at math, so we end up with that. And now we've got this kind of uh, basket weaving happening. Loving it. Loving the basket weave, which is great. So now let's not look at that original shape. Let's just look at the work we've done as that kind of comes together. Now, this is kind of an interesting form to enjoy, right? Isn't that a little fun? Um, we might take these and rotate them a little bit further, I think. Now, it's a four-sided shape. There are three of them. Uh, this is, I mean, this is a conundrum, right? It's a real conundrum. 
that how can I how can I make these happen maybe a little bit uh, easier you know what let's do this to make our motions a little bit smoother here and because they all seem to kind of just burst on at the same time let's take our layers and just shift them a little bit in time now I'm gonna hit the U key I'll collapse everything, and then I'll hit the U key again. Single press on the U key will bring up all of your keyframes here. Now, I've just pushed them off in time a little bit, right? I just clicked and dragged the layer to move them. And now we get one, two, three, bing, bang, bang. These three, three bouncing laser beams as they come in. That's looking pretty good. So that might be good. Maybe I'm going to drag these out a little bit, make it take a little longer. You can also grab a bunch of keyframes. Hold down Alt, grab the last of the keyframes, and see it stretching them out like this. So moving and massaging your keyframes um, is going to bring you a lot of joy, I hope. <laughs> um, but that's the fun of doing things, uh, uh, animating things in After Effects. Okay, so we've got this thing coming on. I'm going to take them, and I'm going to recolor them now. Um, that we are going to go through here, and we're just going to go to the stroke and set it down to be black like that because we are we are recreating what the final element kind of looks like i'm going to create a new null object a new layer that contains no information and i'm going to take these three elements and i'm going to parent them using this pick whip to that null now what does parenting mean parenting uh, means that they these children are going to follow their parent around everywhere. So if I were to rotate the parent, the children will rotate with it, okay? So we use this when we want to group things together um, and make them all kind of behave similarly, right? And there are a lot of fun, creative ways we can use parenting. I'm gonna just do this. I'm gonna hit S to call up the scale. I'm gonna hit R to call up the rotation. I'm going to rotate this by 180 degrees. It doesn't look like anything's changed, but we have now shifted, you know, where everything starts and ends. Good, I'm happy with that. And I'm going to set keyframes for the scale and the rotation. Okay. Now, these keyframes are where we want to end. So I'm going to dial back towards the beginning here. And I'm going to crank this back like so and I'm gonna shrink down the scale like this. So, you see we've set these keyframes towards the beginning that are smaller and rotated around. So now, the whole thing will rotate into position like so. Like that, oh maybe, oh, or we could have it maybe start larger, I don't know, maybe that's better. Kinda of like that, as this thing slides in. But you see we have that hard clunk because these need to be eased, so grab the keyframes, hit F9, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go here into the graph editor, and grab these handles, pull the handles, all right, and shoom, we get something like that. You can also pull these earlier handles like this, and we end up with that. Hopefully that's good, and... Uh, helpful for people, which is great. If you want a bit more variety, I would say that what we want to do is take this offset and alter that. Oh, and there was someone in the chat, uh, Damaris was having trouble uh, with importing the file, uh, but looks like everything worked out, which is great. It's great. Mm. People are feeling hypnotized, then it is working, yes. Become hypnotized. <laughs> oh. Okay. <laughs> so interesting, uh, interesting uh, stuff in the chat. Questions about sort of what is the purpose of CC Animate? What is the purpose of, of After Effects? Um, and yeah, so that's kind of uh, uh, an, an interesting thing to, to get into. But the one thing I would always say to people is that animation proper like animation you see in cartoons, uh, is actually often done in, some programs are done in CC Animate, um, 
but they are traditional animation, which is a very different field uh, to deal with. Anyway, uh, okay, let's continue with our works. We have the final form coming together, all of that, that basket weaving, we've got it. We need to do something with these, these elements, the, the year, the brand, the synths, all of these things. Let's have them uh, animate on an interesting way. Let's have them reveal themselves to us. Okay, so let's deal with the year and the synths. Bring those up to the top a little bit. And just so that we know what we're playing with, I'm gonna change their layer color to yellow. And uh, yeah, we're gonna come in here. I'm gonna drag them to kind of start around here, I think. And I'm gonna call up their positions. I'm gonna move into the future and I'm gonna set keyframes because this is where they're going to end up. This is where they're gonna, they're gonna land, right? So let's roll it back to the beginning right here. We're gonna grab these elements and I'm just gonna pull them into the center of the screen. All right, so you're gonna get moved into the center. And so let's see, let's go to 960 maybe. Oh no, I don't need to move it over. <laughs> I just need to move it in. So let's move it to 540 and 540. You can always type in values in here if you wish. So I know that the middle center of this is 960 by 540. So that's where I'm kind of moving these into. And again, all oh, this motion, ugh, not great. So ease, go into the graph editor, pull your handles as we've been doing. So then we get this kind of a thing. Now I would like to mix in the transparency, right? So I'm gonna hold down shift, hit T. If you look at that, it's the opacity here to have fun with us. Transparency, T is for transparency, it's fine. Um, glad, glad people are, are enjoying what we're laying down here. Um, so. What we're going to do, we know we want this to end at 100%, so we've set our keyframes by clicking the stopwatch, and we've got both of these selected, right? I've got them both selected at the same time. Grab that 100%, drag them down. Right? And I think from here, that's going to work. I'm going to drag this here, and I'm going to ease that. So, boo! So that kind of comes into frame, right? So hopefully that kind of makes sense, that these kind of drift like so. Okay, good, 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 good. Now, what about this middle part? What about this part? Well, there's a lot of things we could do. Like we've just shown, we could translate it, right? We could change its position. We could change its opacity. Um, there are a lot of ways that we might make this happen. Because this is kind of a hero element, right? that we would probably want this to have a little bit more gravitas to it, a little bit more interest. So rather than having all of the letters kind of happen at once, let's have them separate. So we can do that by going right click, create. We're gonna create shapes from vector layers. Okay, we've created this thing here that says brand outlines. If we twirl into it, we twirl into this thing, twirl into the contents, and then we have these three groups I present to you. Three groups. And uh, <laughs> someone in the chat says, this is easy. Like, absolutely it's easy. Once you, once you get going with it, it becomes so easy, right? Um, so yeah, we got this coming on. Let's grab this. Let's have this kind of start coming on. And we are going to animate on here the scale. I'm going to start by animating the scale of the entire layer. And we know we want it to end at 100%, but let's have it start much larger, up like this, but yeah. And we'll bring it on down, right? So we're gonna take this, we're gonna ease it, and grab this handle, give it a pull, so it's kinda coming down like that. Whoosh, 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 right? There we go. Oh, we got, uh, we got people uh, hanging out uh, from Costa Rica. Hello, hello, love Costa Rica. Big fan. Um, love the love the focus on environment there. So much of their do you know so much of Costa Rica's energy comes from natural sources. Anyway, um, yeah. and uh, in the chat, uh, can you give tips slash knowledge? on the process of starting design projects, motion graphic design projects. Ooh, so that'll be, that might be more for um, for a more kind of in-depth um, holistic thing. All I can say is that you want to plan early. 
you want to always be planning. <laughs> ABP, always be planning. Um, do your storyboards, do your pre-production. Um, I, I talk I talk ad nauseum about this stuff on the EC Abrams channel. So hopefully that that is good. Um, okay, so we've got this coming down and I said I wanted to do something individual with these letters, right? So every layer has properties, right? Every layer has these transform properties, but every shape layer, every group within the shape layer itself also has properties. Notice transform opacity, ooh, layer opacity. We have layer opacity and group opacity. Oh, interesting, okay. So we could do something individual with each of these transform opacities in here, right? That's pretty fun. So let's set those. I don't need to see all of this and I can hit the U key and we'll just bring all that back down. I'm gonna grab these keyframes, move them forward. I've already got them all selected, so I'm gonna drag their, boop, boop, drag their values down to be zero. So they start at zero. And then I'm gonna offset them. So which one starts first? Probably the, the E. So we're gonna push the A forward. We're gonna push these forward and see what we got. Boop, boop, boop. There we go, we have a nice kind of relaxing, definitely, definitely basic. We're keeping it basic on this first one. You know, day one, <laughs> keeping it basic. Uh, we're gonna rip, boom, there we go. <laughs> uh, Sean says, need a bigger screen. I don't know about that. This is some, these are some chonky 4K displays in front of me. <laughs> it's difficult to stream a bigger screen. <laughs> I'll say that. Uh, but yes, okay. So we have this circle, circle, circle. Ah, how relaxing is this? I think, I think we've done a very good job, I would say. The only thing that I wanna to touch up a little bit um, on some of these is I'm not super keen on how they all kind of weave from this, um, it doesn't feel super balanced, right? It feels kind of chunky over here. So I'm gonna call up their rotations. I'm gonna bump this one. I'm gonna add 90 degrees to that. So it starts a little bit over here. And on this one, I'm going to add 180 degrees on that. So it starts over there. So, boom, 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 boom. Hey, that feels a little bit more basket weavy. Okay, good. Now we wanna start thinking about, should we be pushing our timing a little bit? Does it feel confused when we observe this, say, from far away? Is the confusion good? Is it beneficial for our audience to feel a little bit confused about what's happening? And more critically, we're observing dark on checkerboard background right now, right? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make a new solid, okay? And now we're gonna grab this and we're gonna move it into a white. Um, <laughs> we added it, move it into like a white area here. Oh, here's my solid settings. I had it on my second screen, oh, being very rude, but yeah. So we get that. So we just push like so. We have a nice white solid, put it into the background. So this is how it would look if it were animating on a light background. Okay, that's interesting. What if this were inverted, right? If that, if it were different. Um, and uh, let's see here, we're gonna go right click, new, uh, adjustment layer, a different kind of adjust, a different kind of layer entirely. Adjustment layers behave very differently from other layers in that they apply things um, to everything below them, right? So I'm gonna go on here, I'm gonna type invert, and invert is an effect. So when I apply an effect to the adjustment layer, everything under it is changed immediately. Um, so how does this look when it is light on dark? Okay, I'm satisfied with this. I'm feeling good about this generally. So I'm gonna, we don't really need the adjustment layer. We don't really need the white solid. Those were, those were just to check our work, right? But I think it's important to do that when you're animating things just to make sure it has good flow, it feels nice and, and it's good. Ooh, Kat <laughs> Kathleen Illustrated jumping into the into the chat. Uh, people people stick around, you'll, you'll see more of her today. Um, <laughs> excellent, excellent. And I just really wanna quickly have a look at the chat and see what people are, are, are into. Mallory's asking, how do we add music to this logo? Um, you can import audio files into After Effects if you like and lay them underneath. 
After Effects is not the best place to deal with audio, though. So I'll just say that, uh, Mallory, that uh, After Effects plus audio, not, not always equal good. So I would recommend uh, bumping into Premiere or even opening up Audition in order to score things. Just my preference. Um, just because of how things work. But if it's really just dropping down a simple music track, not a lot of play with it, that could be fine, right? Um, what else are people asking? Uh, Madhu is asking, Madhu is asking, uh, can you please give an idea of where we can get the best plugins for After Effects? Oh, the best plugins are, uh, are, uh, are the ones in your heart. No. <laughs> hmm. Uh, there are great plugins. AEScripts.com is where a lot of the aftermarket third-party plugins are at. Um, and there are some great ones there. Okay. But I'm happy with this. This is working out. How would we then use this, right? If we're gonna take this and we're gonna use it in like a social media campaign, if we're gonna export this, we we have to we have to take this object and go somewhere with it, right? So what you could do, there was a lot of uh, talk about, well, you should render this as uh, a GIF perhaps, or, or as an animated thing. Something I recommend you do instead is just save your work, right? And we'll call this, let's call this layer um, August 10th, um, 16 by nine, right? And this is where we're gonna get into a little bit of project organization, okay? <laughs> a yif? <laughs> oh man, I, I pronounce it as gif um, because um, I, I now have Dutch family, so. <laughs> oh man. Mm. Oh, PD in the chat. The best plugins are the friends we made along the way. <laughs> You're right. You're so right. Um, the best plugins were with you all along. Um, so we've we're we're gonna call this August tenth, sixteen by nine. Okay. Now, if we were to use this, you can literally just use um, just use this. Um, on say, uh, if we were just gonna take this, we can just plomp it down into other compositions here in After Effects. We could import it uh, right, into, uh, right into Premiere. We could uh, bring this, um, we could export this as, as like a, a unit and then import it into other things. Um, what I want to do here is make something that will just come out of After Effects. I love After Effects, it's where I spend most of my day. So I'm going to make something that is going to be uh, 1080 by 1080 square, 24 frames a second. Um, and this is going to be our export comp, right? So this is, this is going to be exported into the world. Whoosh, it's going to go, okay? And Let's say we had like a photo we want to put back there. You know, this is a very floral design. Well, don't worry, I've got this picture of my grandma's sofa. <laughs> JK, JK, this is from uh, this is from Adobe Stock. I love this kind of this kind of element. And I'm just going to position this flower, this giant flower right here. If you check out my Instagram today, you'll see I've already dropped this one on, folks. Um, but we would position our photo kind of in the background here. Now we're gonna take our August 10th 16 by nine, drop it on top, right? Oh, it doesn't look like anything. And we'll scrub ahead and it'll animate. And you can see that now we have this logo an uh, animation, um, just it's contained, right? All of our work in here is lovingly contained inside this composition. <laughs> Kathleen, I'm... I'm Glad you approve of my of my floral print. I would love to have this on a shirt if I could. Uh, <laughs> so it's it's interesting, uh, you know, interesting how this this will work out. So one thing that I want to do, um, uh, I want to take this, and the background is already fairly dark. Okay, it's a fairly dark background. So I need to invert this logo. And like I talked about with effects, we can just take our effect, our invert effect, and apply it boop, to there. We go from dark to light, 
right? Um, and someone is asking, uh, Madhu is asking, can we, can't we export directly from After Effects itself? Absolutely we can. Um, I'm, glad, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, we'll, we'll get there. We're only hanging out together for another half hour, but, uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll flash ahead just a little bit uh, because people are asking about it. Um, so we can export in two ways. You can go composition, and then we can go add to Adobe Media Encoder, or you can go add to render queue, and if you add to the render queue, you can then uh, choose all of your stuff in here. And that's, oh, I mean, there's so many great, there's a lot of tutorials and documentation about render queue. There's a lot of documentation about um, the um, media encoder. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> but, 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 let's return. Let's return to our export comp here. And yeah, just like someone was saying uh, in the chat, invert, is that easy? <laughs> It is that easy, yes. Um, and we're inverting the RGB spectrum, but I mean, you can invert the alpha spectrum if you want, which looks pretty crazy too. Um, I'll be honest with you. Boom, boom, we fade between them. Anyway, we're gonna invert on the RGB channels. Um, and, uh, you know, this is because we wanna go from something dark to something light. Now, I don't, I don't, I don't want to get away from this before we look at some other ideas. What if you wanted this to have a color to it, right? Purposefully today, I wanted us to work with a logo that is a mono-colored logo, meaning it only has one color. Now you might say, well, Evan, there's there's black and white right there, but you know, that's not that's that's not true. There's only there's only color and the absence of color. There's only something or nothing. Right, so really this is a mono-colored logo. So we can invert it, or I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna grab the fill effect. So fill, you can search in your effects and presets and just type in fill. And then you can grab your fill, drag it out onto this layer. Oh, and now it's a, a brilliant red, or maybe it's uh, gonna be the, uh, uh, the light color of one of these flowers, right? So you can, you can choose Ooh, maybe this color. Ooh, I don't know. It really depends. Um, but you know, you can you can pick colors. You could just choose a color. You know, choose all kinds of crazy colors if you want. Um, so now we've done we've done all of our animation in there, and now we can recolor it as we'd like. Now those that's inverting. That's a fill. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about gradients. So let's go in here and let's grab gradient. Gradient ramp. So we can generate a gradient ramp on this if you'd like. So you can set your start and end of the gradient uh, like so. Start and end of gradient, wonderful. You can now pick your colors, colors of the gradient. Ooh, let's pick the colors of this flower. This one this beautiful flower there. Ooh, boy. Go like that and just kind of touch it off a little bit. So we're getting Things are getting a little bit muddied uh, here. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Um, that what we want to do if you're sticking your logo onto a photo is that we want to um, we want to differentiate them uh, from it, right? So we want to differentiate the logo from the background. They need to be different but still harmonized. Oh, we've got Gus jumping in, jumping into the chat. Hey, Gus, how you doing? Mm. Always, always good to see. Always good to see the team hanging out. So let's just, let's just use the fill. All right. And let's take the fill and grab a light color from up here, one of these flowers, right? So that's working out, I think. But one of the things uh, and we talk about in, um, when we talk about in design, you want things to stand out or differentiate from each other. There are a few ways we can do it. You can differentiate by uh, hue. You can di differentiate by uh, tint. So if something is lighter, darker, that contrast makes them pop out, right? This background is predominantly dark, so we've made this light. Something could be uh, detailed versus uh, not detailed, right? Something could be sharp versus blurry. So let's amplify these differences. So on the background here, we are gonna go and we are gonna go grab a, um, 
I'm going to use a Gaussian blur, but there are many blurs for you to choose, choose from. So I'm going to put the Gauss blur on here. Um, and we're just going to drag that up. Beep, 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 beep. Blur that out just a little bit. I still want to, I still like a lot of the detail of the flower, so I'm not going to blur it too much. But you can see that it does make our logo kind of pop a little bit, right? We're, we're popping off the background. Just a subtle, subtle bump, right? Now, um, <laughs> Lamont, yeah, in design or in design. <laughs> I love that. It's so good. I hope people can watch the chat replay when they see this video or they won't know what any of these jokes are. Um, <laughs> uh, Noor is asking, what if the client asks to change the background image? Ooh, I like this. I like this because it brings me up uh, an interesting idea that I just started applying effects um, right onto this photo, right? But like we talked about, you can use an adjustment layer. So I'm going to new adjustment layer. I'm going to drop that uh, between. This is adjustment layer between our logo adjustment layer image, right? So the adjustment layer, let's put our Gaussian blur, Gaussian, the, the blur on this. <laughs> let's go say 15. Um, oh, 15 is maybe too high. Let's go 10. Okay. Now I'm going to grab a curves, a little curves adjustment as well. And we are going to just bring the darkness down a little bit by adjusting the curve. Oh, look how much this is popping already. Um, so then, boom, 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 boom. Wonderful. So now that's coming together. Uh, some, what else could be helpful? Maybe I'll just shrink this down just a little bit, get it inside the flower like that. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Boom, 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 boom. Loving it. Now, let's talk about what we might want to animate in this space, okay? So we have a photo, we have our logo, we do have some lovely animation happening from the logo, but let's, let's add a little bit more, shall we? Let's say this is gonna take all of 10 seconds to hang out. So something needs to be altered over the whole 10 seconds. I'm gonna just go ahead and grab this, grab its scale, keyframe the scale. For the background, we might want to scale that background up and down, but you'll notice that we've shifted and moved it. It's all over the place. And like like uh, someone was saying in the, in the chat, what if the client wants to change that later? So I'm going to go ahead and go new null object. I'm going to set myself up for success. And I'm going to parent this image to the null, right? And I'm going to rename this null um, Photo control, photo, photo control, okay? And so, because this photo is parented to this photo control, I can now alter its scale, and we're gonna zoom in and out of the flower, okay? So, I got keyframes on those. Let's start this off with the logo maybe being larger and the flower being maybe smaller, and just see how that looks. Mm, yes, a nice little subtle change over 10 minutes. Yes, okay, let's render that. Let's give ourselves a little preview and see if we like it. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, Roland. Hey, buddy. Good to see you, man. Ro Roland is very, very clever, very adept in After Effects as well. Mm. Enjoying some tea while I wait uh, for this thing to come together. Uh, so many pixels. It is a very large photo. I don't know why I use such a high def photo, but so now you can see we get this lovely subtle change over time as these two elements uh, are kind of playing off of each other here. Now, what's really great about um, about having our photo be parented to the null is that now I can kind of move the photo around, but it's still scaling from the exact middle, right? Now, there was a question, what if you had to change the photo? Okay, well, I'm gonna grab my stock, my other stock photo, my other lovely stock photo from After Effects, drop it down here, put it below the adjustment layer, parent it to the photo control, and now we are just going to grab this photo, which again, is quite large, and just kind of scale down uh, which of these plants do I like? Do I like? This one's a pretty creepy looking plant. 
These are all very poisonous plants, by the way. <laughs> Just a heads up. Anyway, now we've got a different uh, image, but you would probably want to adjust your fill uh, accordingly because now the image is mostly uh, bright. So you might have more adjustments to do, more adjustments than just swapping the photo, if that makes sense. Hopefully it does um, to think about. So that's kind of, you know, what we're dealing with. And also because of the, the level of detail on this particular photo, it no longer really makes sense um, that, uh, I'm just gonna line this up. Yeah, kind of like that. You know, so as you change the photo, it's important to realize that, you know, the amount of density and complexity, will it be readable? Will it work? Tough to say, not with every photo. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, the client says, I prefer the previous one. Hey, I got you. Boom. We're there. We're back. <laughs> so um, many, 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 many uh, options. After Effects is um, non-destructive. Right, so that's one of the big takeaways that After Effects is non-destructive. So anything we change can be unchanged. Anything we do can be undone. So it is really important to remember that. And you know, you know what's always a good idea? Is just to um, make more duplicates of your comps. So this is export comp A. Oh, I think the client's going to have a revision. I'm going to duplicate it, and we're going to do export comp B um, and, and make sure that in export comp B, that's where we're going to modify some things. Oh, they changed their mind. They want to go back. Okay, I'll just render export comp A again. No problem, <laughs> right? So hopefully that, um, that makes sense. Now, Tim Mobest is asking a question. Um, will it blend? Now, uh, Tim, sometimes I think uh, that you can read my mind um, because... Before we're done here, I want to talk to you a little bit about something I've hidden from you this whole time. I don't know why I did that. But this little button here, your interface might have it, it might not. It really depends on how like big your screen is. This is toggle switches slash modes. So you've got these switches here. I'm going to toggle it over to look at modes. Now modes you might be familiar with if you uh, use a lot of Photoshop or if you dig a little deeper in Illustrator. Modes are how the layers blend with each other. So, Tim, will it blend? <laughs> right here. We're going to blend it. Um, so, I want to talk a little bit about blending because a lovely thing is the interaction between different colors. Right now, everybody's set to normal. Everybody's being real normal with their blending. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the logo's blending mode from normal to screen. Right, so we've changed it down to screen. I'm going to grab its opacity and just kind of bring that down a little bit. Maybe, or maybe screen isn't what we want. Maybe we want want it to be set to add. Maybe you're maybe you're more of an add additive person. Um, so playing around with uh, your various blending modes, so long as uh, so long as it's within the brand guides of whatever logo it is, right? Um, you can do all kinds of interesting things in here. You know, we could uh, we could be setting this to overlay perhaps. Isn't that a little bit a little bit more subtle, you know? You could be you could be setting this to you could be setting this to what's well, another nice one? Um, let's go with <laughs> stencil alpha. Isn't that an interesting look? We could be using uh, <laughs> silhouette alpha. We cut a hole in it. Um, anyway, that's the idea that that you can use all of these different forms of blending modes to play around and make something that is perhaps more softer, more integrated, um, and just more interesting uh, by doing that. Now, the important thing to remember is we're using fairly basic light and dark uh, things. Okay. I'm gonna change the fill color to uh, be like the rose uh, color here. And I'm gonna set it to add. And that's what it would look like if we did that. So just keep in mind that color plays uh, very different, uh, very differently. <laughs> and uh, you know, hopefully um, that, uh, hopefully that kind of makes sense as you play around uh, with this. Um, oh, and uh, Sub Sublation Studio is asking, 
Stencil Alpha was like a mask. Yes, 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 yes. So um, the blending modes break down into these categories. And these ones down here are concerned with kind of alpha stuff. All right. Now, if we were to say Stencil Alpha, and let me just jack that opacity up to 100, it no longer we no longer care about the color of the layer. None of that information is important. The only information that's important is whether pixels are visible or invisible. And stencil alpha is basically applying a stencil down through all of our artwork, right? Down through everything that's here. And any layer we place below this will be subject to that stencil. Uh, silhouette is the inverse relationship. Um, and you can also do this based off of the luma, if you want, the luma, luminance information of the layer. That's a little bit more advanced, I think, uh, than uh, we, we really want to dive into too strongly today uh, because we want to we want to we want to keep thinking about shape and form and movement. Right. So with all of that in mind, this is a, a two day kind of affair. So we will be back tomorrow with doing more logos, we'll be doing a different logo tomorrow. We might even go through multiple logos tomorrow. I don't really know. Um, so with that in mind, though, I would like I would like people to uh, to just let me know sort of in the chat. We have we have options. We have options for what we're doing tomorrow, folks. Um, and I would like to get your opinions uh, about them. I have 16 options here, you know, one up here in the corner. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, hold on. Let me I'm going to grab these numbers. <laughs> right here do, 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 do. you know we have these these options i would like to know um everyone everybody everybody in the chat please let me know which um which of these uh options you would like to dive into tomorrow um just just let me know by typing in the number and uh, we'll we'll mess with it uh in there so that's one two three four Five, six, and so on, all the way down to sixteen. Um, again, my face is up in a, up in the corner. Um, I'm seeing some early votes for number nine. <laughs> number nine. Uh, number five. Don't worry, I'll come through and I'll correlate uh, all the data later uh, once I have a peruse. So it's just going by by gut feel. Mm. And we will uh, we will try to do it. Ooh, five and six together. Mm. <laughs> lots of fives, lot of fives. <laughs> we'll we'll make that happen. So that's kind of what's on deck for tomorrow, I think. So you know, do let me know. I'll keep correlating those ideas. <laughs> and like I said, I'll be able to grab these grab these from the chat. But I would like to say, you know, we've got uh, we've got maybe. Uh, 15 minutes left to hang out together here. So, you know, that's going to be great. <laughs> and uh, we'll do it up. Da -da 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 -da. Mm, people are asking, uh, can you animate a logo in Photoshop? You can, but I but I prefer to use After Effects because it's better. Okay, good good votes out of people. I think just from uh, just from a cursory um, a uh, a cursory idea. Um, is uh, it looks like looks like number five is going to be an, an early winner here, um, but oh four six I'm hearing a lot of love for six. I'm going to try tomorrow. We're going to try to do five and six. How about we do that? I like it. I like that. Um, but 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 if you want to follow along and and do this stuff uh, yourself, the file here with all of these is available in that Behance.net description. So you can, you can check that out. You can play around with that, uh, at your leisure, at your leisure. So hopefully that's going to be good. Uh, Lamont is saying, will we cover some text animators tomorrow? <laughs> we will, we will. I am, I am, uh, I am planning on it currently. So you've, 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 foiled my surprise. Oh, everyone's ruining all my surprises today. Um, but before we go, I want to recap um, all of the things uh, that we kind of got through today, just to kind of, you know, remind you, remind you what we did. So we started in here. We picked our favorite. Well, I picked my favorite just because I'm, I'm selfish like that. And then we we took our assets from here, and then we moved it into um, into its own separate space. 
where we then separated it out into its various component layers, right? We then uh, took those layers and we converted them all into shapes. We wanted to make them all into shapes. We didn't have to, but just to show you, kind of make that happen. Uh, people are asking, what time tomorrow? We'll be back on at uh, 10.30 Eastern time, 7.30 Pacific. So it's going to be great. Um, and we are going to get into some, some more, more layers of detail, more complexity. Um, but here in Illustrator, we examined our files and we looked for what troubles they might give us, right? And in this one particularly, we discovered that the person who drew this made this out of closed paths. Ugh, these closed filled paths. Ugh, like they were, like they were uh, making this logo at us, some kind of revenge. I don't know what I ever did to them, but this is how you commonly get logos. Now there's a few reasons for that. One of them is that this is the way uh, print shops prefer to get things. And I will say that if you were to use this logo, um, if you were to use this logo for 3D printing, if you were gonna use it for CNC routing, if you were gonna use it for vinyl cutting, then what you need are these shapes, right? Having multiple stroked paths is not gonna be what those people want to receive. So it's much more common to see things in this way. A, a courteous, <laughs> A courteous logo and brand identity designer would provide you with both the the stroked and the filled versions. Just saying. Where's my camera? Just saying. Um, so, you know, please be courteous when you design your logos and, and include that. However, this gave us the opportunity to work through the troubles that we often have. That in After Effects, we pulled in all of our files and we recreated this more complex element as simpler uh, base elements, right? As simpler ideas. And then we were able to, starting with one of them, break it down. And we, and we ended up with three duplicates that are just offset from each other. Um, yeah, luckily it's just three rounded squares, right? <laughs> and these things can be um, a lot more uh, difficult. Um, and, uh, and they can be more nuanced and you might have to actually redraw things here in Illustrator or you might have to do a lot more uh, legwork to make that stuff kind of work. So just keep that in mind. Now, um, after that, we looked at moving stuff around and messing with their properties. Ooh. We have a question in the chat though, real quick. Um, what export would you recommend when using the logo as a starter for a website. Oh, I, I imagine that uh, uh, Timia, Timea, oh, I'm so bad with names. I'm, I apologize for everybody's name that I've, that I've done very bad service to, but um, they're, they're asking, um, you know, how you would use this for a website. Well, there's a lot of interesting ways you could do that. Um, I would actually recommend, you know, take this for what it's worth, but if you're gonna use this in a web format, you would probably want to convert it into an HTML5 uh, JSON. And you can do that using an extension called Body Movin. So that'll turn it into various ones and zeros that an HTML5 can understand, or various JSON code, right? Um, but um, uh, a, a, a GIF, uh, <laughs> a GIF uh, is a good, uh, a good format. Um, some websites, though, might even prefer an H.264. It depends if you want transparency or not, um, and and those kinds of things. So a lot of that comes down to your web dev requirements, right? So rather than thinking what is best to push out of After Effects, almost everything can be pushed out of After Effects, right? If you apply, if you really apply yourself, you can get anything out of here. Um, it's what the where it's going to live um, to receive, right? That's what you want to look into. What is what is the best format for web to receive? And that's going to be down to platform limitations, bandwidth limitations, those kinds of things. So, oh boy, <laughs> a little a little late show tangent for us here. Um, anyway, so I was I was recapping what we what we had done, um, and we were we had created this uh, spirograph kind of deal by duplicating and rotating this uh, this square 
and we made use of what we would call a write-on technique using the trim paths. So the trim paths modifying the end and the offset to push push our, our lines around as it built built on in this little little pattern here. We uh, brought all of those, we parented all of those to a null so that we could rotate them and scale them together as a team, as a family. They could all travel together. Then we did a little bit, a little bit of very simple translation and scale with opacity changes on these uh, elements, on these layers here, so that they could, uh, they could come on in a very pleasing, soft way. So there you go. <laughs> Just like that, and then of course um, there was there was some discussion of of timing, of shifting things around, of moving keyframes. We did talk quite a bit. I mean, for a beginner tutorial, quite a bit about the graph editor, right? So when you uh, select layers, when you select properties, and you go into the graph editor, you can see their change over time. Okay, so this is really vital, even though you're just starting out, maybe that hanging out with here and, and getting comfortable with your graph editors, understanding that this is the change of the property over time and we can massage that to be a little bit more pleasant uh, is fantastic. So that's your graph editor that you wanna play around in. Uh, we talked about sliding keyframes around, how you can hold down alt when you select a bunch and, and drag them out a little bit like this. And that was kind of phase one, animating this thing together of our mono, um, <laughs> Does it have mono? No, it's a mono-colored, mono-colored logo. It only has, um, it only has the color or nothing. So it's it's either there or it's not there, right? It's either opaque or transparent. So then we took that and we put it into this format here. We just drop it into this comp. However, you could use it in Premiere. You could use it um, in all sorts of places. Um, you could just bring the .aep into Premiere if you were tagging this on the end of something. So use that dynamic link um, and uh, and that kind of thing. And unfortunately, yes, uh, yes, you're you're coming. If you're coming in late here at the end, we're in the recap portion of the show uh, where I explain what we did. You can always watch. Um, you can always watch the replays. Replays of this are on Behance.net for all time and all space. So you will enjoy those. Um, but it's also just the start of a great day of programming. So um, you'll want to stick around for even more uh, coming up after this. Uh, especially, especially come back uh, at the at the end, towards the end of the program. If you, you know, if you've got other things to do, you want to come back for that uh, d Designing in the Dark um, uh, first. I think it's the premiere of that. Someone can let me know in, in the chat if it's not. But anyway, so... Um, <clears throat> And people are asking, can I post to Instagram from After Effects? I don't think you can push directly, but you would want to send it out as an H.264, and we will cover that momentarily. Um, but what we did in here was we dropped in a photo back here. We used our parenting again to start scaling that photo. We used an adjustment layer to make the photo a little blurry, a little curvier, a little, a little darker so that this could stand out. And we examined a few ways that we could beautify this logo even further, but it was beautiful already. Um, using things like gradients, fills, the invert, you know, that, that does it quite perfectly. Hmm. And uh, yeah, so when you wanted to export this, oh, we're coming to the end, uh, I, don't wanna, I don't wanna miss anything. Um, there are various ways to do that. We can go here, we can go composition, <clears throat> Add to Adobe Media Encoder. And, oh, oh, I don't know what window it's going to pop up on. Oh, it's on the wrong window. That's fine. I'll grab it in a moment. But if you were sending this away, if you're sending this to Instagram, if you're sending this um, to be doing things, uh, Paula is asking, um, the timeline looks longer than the animation. Is there a quick way to make it the same time? Absolutely. Paula, I'm glad you asked. Uh, I usually let it run long because I use my work area here to define how much of it I'm even interested in, right? But you can set your work area, as we've done here at 10 seconds, right click, trim comp to work area, boop. And just like that, we nailed it. So you can, you can always trim it down if you like. 
Um, if you have a specific number in mind, go to your ah, go to your, <laughs> go to your composition settings, and you can dial that in just like that. Boop. Okay, where was I with my media encoder? So we fired up our media encoder because people wanted to know how do I post this on Instagram? How do I get this on my grams? So we uh, we go here and you would export it as an H.264. Um, now I recommend uh, using uh, high quality um, HD uh, 1080, um, but really you, you wanna match the source, right? You wanna make sure that you're sending out, if this is square, you wanna send square. If this is vertical, you wanna send vertical. So match source high bit rate will get you there. So hopefully that'll do it. And then you would usually need to bounce this to your phone and then off to Instagram. Um, there are various ways to upload to the to the grams, to the various social medias, your Twitters, whatever, through web. Um, so that's, anyway, that's, I mean, that's neither here nor there. That's a tomorrow problem. That's a problem for tomorrow people. However, however, so ends our time together here. Thank you so much for watching. I got to turn off the stream now so that other people can jump in. So it is time to go. Thank you so much for watching. Stick around for the rest of the things. And uh, let's, uh, I'll, see you I'll see you tomorrow for more stuff. And uh, goodbye for now.